Hello from all of us here at FluteTube, that's me. <laughs> it's been a little while since I've posted a video, but it's because I was very busy with a creative project. I was recording a CD and preparing to record a CD, and I actually hope to be busy with many such projects in the future, but I will continue posting videos whenever I have time. I was actually working on this CD project throughout the 2023 calendar year, but it was a few weeks ago that I traveled to Bremen, or you might hear it pronounced Bremen or Brim, uh, depending who you're talking to, in Germany to record a CD with my hat trick trio. It's a flute, viola, harp trio, and we call ourselves Hat Trick. I decided to do this video to tell you about my experience going to Germany and even just why my trio decided to go record this CD in Germany. We had a lot of questions like, are you just trying to be all fancy and exotic going to Germany to record a CD? Well, yes, kind of, but there were actual reasons beyond that. One reason is that there is a recording engineer and producer there named Eustace Beyer, who is the only recording engineer that the principal harpist in the Berlin Philharmonic is willing to work with because he knows really, really well how to record a harp. And that's a very difficult thing to record and capture well. The other thing is that in fact, it was cheaper to go to Germany to record a CD than it would be to do it in, say, New York. Hat Trick is a trio that's been together for a while, and we recorded our first CD in New York City at the American Academy of Arts and Letters, which is a fabulous location. And we worked with David Frost, who is a multi-Grammy award-winning producer. In fact, our year we were one of his nine CD projects that he completed, and for our year, he won Best Classical Producer of the Year. So we were given the option, which of course we took, to make our CD recording available to members of the Voting Academy so that they could judge David Frost and decide whether or not to award him this Best Classical Producer of the Year. So in fact, Hat Trick received a nod at the Grammys because our CD producer, David Frost, won a Grammy that year based on our CD plus eight others. So why would we abandon all of that and go to Germany? Well, I told you about Eustace. We're so excited to have this sound on the CD and have it go out into the world representing Hat Trick. But yes, also it was much cheaper for us to go as a trio, fly to Germany, stay in a hotel there, record there, rent the hall there, which was a beautiful hall, than it would have been for us to go back to New York City and the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Eustace having guided us to the Bremen Sundesal, where we recorded, and also having chosen wonderful recording equipment for us to use, really captured the sound of our trio beautifully. The harp is beautiful, but so is the whole sound of the recording. We just got the first edited version in our hands and this CD will be released on Bridge Records in spring of 2024. I will keep you posted with an exact release date when it's available. Our first CD was also on Bridge Records and they did a great job. It's called Garden of Joys and Sorrows if you want to look it up. Leading up to the recording, First, we needed to decide on a general plan. We got together as a trio in New York City. We call ourselves a New York City-based trio. That's because home is where the harp is. It's much easier to work where the harp is located, and that's where Christy is. And I always love reasons to go to New York as well. We met up in January of 2023, and Christy brought up the possibility of working with Eustace, and we were instantly in favor of it, leading to the recording sessions, which we were able to book in November in Germany. We had to have a game plan. First of all, we had a commission already in the works by composer Daniel Dorf called Big Sky for flute, viola, harp. That piece got into our hands January of 2023. So that's why we all met to read that piece together. And we met with Daniel Dorf and talked through what we wanted to do with this CD. And because we had this commission coming from Daniel Dorf called Big Sky, we used that as a basis to formulate what else we wanted to put on the CD. We worked together as a trio to come up with repertoire. We all had suggestions. 
We worked on getting hold of all the music. We also commissioned a piece by Jessica Meyer called My Heart is the Churning Sea. We settled on a composition by composer David Bruce called The Eye of Night. Also, a piece called Sunrise by Thea Musgrave. There's another piece by Angelica Negron called Drawings for Mayoko. We recorded the Bax Elegiac Trio, which nearly every flute viola harp trio performs, but it's got an insane harp part. So there we were working with Eustace with this great harp sound coming out of the recording sessions, and we wanted to get a really excellent recording of the Bax because Christy has the harp chops for it. We met in April in New York City and finalized that repertoire for our CD, and then our time together was quite limited. We met in June for a week in Boston, just a very intense rehearsal time, one week of rehearsing day in, day out, pretty much, as much as was physically and mentally productive. And we had some great times around Boston. We gave one concert at Berkeley, an informal concert at the end of that week, so that we could air all of our repertoire in front of an audience and decide what we each needed to work on from there. And then the next time we met was in Utah. We had a week in Utah to do another round of intense rehearsals. We just had to trust each other to practice really hard between June and September and use what we did in June to build on so that we would be ready to give concerts in September. We did three concerts in Utah and we rehearsed around those concerts like crazy. My trio members came and stayed at my house for the week and we just went to work. Daniel Dorf joined us in Utah, which was wonderful. He came and talked at all of our concerts since we were premiering his piece, Big Sky. And we had a trio chef who came into town, Leif came and cooked meals for us so we would rehearse for three hours and then go eat quiche, rehearse for three hours and then eat a torta rustica. So it was a really great intense trio time in Utah. We got a lot accomplished and ready for Germany. So yes, we practiced when we could as a trio, but between all the trio work, I practiced and practiced a lot. The CD has a lot of alto and some bass flute in it. And so in addition to the regular standard C flute practice, I needed to spend a lot of time with those big flutes. If you've played much alto or bass flute, especially alto in my opinion, you will see that the intonation behaves differently. There are different notes, different registers, that aren't quite as happily in tune as they are on our regular C flute. So I spent a lot of time getting into the sound of these instruments and worrying about intonation.
And throughout this time, my Dr. Beat was guzzling batteries. I had to replace the nine volt battery in my Dr. Beat right before David and Christy came out to Utah. And we used the Dr. Beat so much that week. And I used it so much in my own practice that in fact, I had to replace it again during October. And then after Germany, when I came home within two days, the battery died again. <laughs> so um, I think that's a testament that we really, really used metronome in our trio preparation and in my private practice for it. And I learned that big flutes are heavy. Maybe that just means I'm not very strong. <laughs> I'm working on it. Our first full day in Bremen was a rehearsal day. We put in a lot of rehearsal time. The hotel gave us a rehearsal space. We rehearsed for several hours and then it was our only chance that we knew we would be able to go see the city of Bremen because we had four days of recording the CD in the Sundesall in Bremen and we wanted to see our surroundings a bit. So we took the bus to downtown Bremen. We walked around. It is the most charming little German town. Of course, since it was November and we'd been rehearsing all of our day hours, it was dark when we got there, but we wandered around the streets, both separately and together. We met up for a great German dinner. Glockenspiel House, built in 1923-24 by Bremen Architects. It owes its name to the Carillon, or Glockenspiel, that was installed between the gables of the building in 1934. And of course, if you know about the musicians of Bremen, you can find them in the city of Bremen. So we went and found them and took a few pictures next to the musicians of Bremen because at that point we figured we could also call ourselves musicians of Bremen.
One morning I also managed to go on a longer walk and saw the Rhododendron Park in Bremen. I'm so glad I saw downtown Bremen and this well-known park so I got some idea of my surroundings there. It was very inspiring to be in this little town away from all of my normal teaching and performing busyness and commitments so that we could enjoy the process and concentrate really hard on the process at the same time. Then the next morning after a night out on the town, we commenced our four days of intense recording work in Bremen's Send Us All concert space. Basically, we owned this concert hall for four days. Nobody else was allowed to book in there and we could stay as long and as late as we needed. But the sound was really wonderful in there. We had great equipment. Hello. <laughs> This is where we're recording. Let's see here. One really interesting thing about the hall is that the entire thing was built suspended from these big wire coils, springs, in 1952. It was built for radio recording and broadcasting and so if you suspend the hall like that and you end up with a floating floor as well, it really isolates the hall from the sounds of the outside world. I've heard about building a hall in this way very recently because there was a hall being built at the university that I used to work at and they were talking about this kind of floating floor. Little did I know that this kind of engineering was done way back in 1952, but sometimes we knew there were noisy things going out on the street, some amount of construction and that kind of thing, and we could not hear it at all inside the hall. You can even go through a door at the back of the concert hall, walk up this tiny little windy staircase all the way to the top and look up there at those big wire coils that are suspending the entire hall. We like to refer to our time in Germany as the Bremen Sessions. It sounds so serious. <laughs> and I would love to go back and record again in this Bremen Send Us All with Eustace, should the opportunity present itself again, which I have optimism that it will. So now you know more about my experience recording this CD in November, a little bit of insider information about how my trio, Hat Trick, approached planning and executing recording this CD. If you're still watching at this point, thanks for making it to the end with me. And I would really appreciate it if you could like this video, maybe leave a comment with any questions or whatever you thought was most interesting or anything I didn't talk about that you wish I would have told you. Likes and comments and subscriptions, all those things really do help my channel get out into the community. So thank you if you can help my channel grow. And here I am in front of the Christmas tree because it's the first time in many years I've managed to put it up for the holidays. Happy holidays and have a wonderful new year coming up.